get my second boy fired real quick. If you want to try to get your Bibles to the chapter, to the book of Luke. The message is on faith or fear, and to be honest with you, I'm really nervous right now. So I'm really feeling that fear. I've been praying. Um, I think the Lord will do something through this. I'm praying that He will. But it will help each and every one of you here. Uh, Luke 8, verse 40. Talking about a man and his daughter. Come on. Jairus his daughter. And it came to pass that when Jesus and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, that people gladly received him, for they for they were all waiting for him. Jesus was coming. Everyone was excited. The great Almighty God, the one who could do anything in the world, was coming. And the people were so excited they were ready to see him. In verse 41, and behold, there came a man named Jairus. And he was the ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. Jairus has now gained his opportunity. He has recognized who is in front of him and is the almighty God. Amen. And he fell down at his feet. Can I tell you something tonight? When you meet Jesus, you just want to fall at his feet. And Jairus knew that this was his, this was his appointment. This was his time. He was not going to let Jesus pass by. This was his time of healing. And it says he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. He needed Jesus Christ. Each and every one of us here had the same need as Jairus. We need Jesus Christ in our life. Verse 42. For he had only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay at dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. The people were all around Jesus. And Jairus, he needed help. He needed the Lord. And Jesus was his way. And he needed him to heal his daughter. This is, this is probably the most catastrophic day of his life. His daughter is dying, but Jesus is there. Amen. The people were all around him. Let's continue. Verse 44. He came behind him and touched the border. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 43. And a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, Neither could be healed of any. The world will do nothing for you this evening that Jesus Christ can. This woman has tried everything in her life. And this is also her moment. It's amazing that Jesus can help more than just one person. Isn't it? It's for all of us. And this woman needed him just as badly as Jairus did. And she was also not going to let her opportunity pass this evening. And just like this service this evening, if you have something on your heart, something on your mind, something you are dealing with, something you are battling with, Jesus is ready to meet you today. Just like he did these two people. Right. It said in verse 44, he came, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stopped. Our life changed that day. Just, be just by touching just the border of his garment. Have we been around just the border of his garment this evening? Have we forgotten about the power in just his garment? Amen. Verse 45. Now let's not forget here. There's, there's a serious issue. Though. Jared's daughter is dying. And this woman has now came in and touched Jesus. And Jesus is about to recognize this. And Jesus said, verse 45, Who touched me? He knew the touch. He knew her touch. I believe when he touched her, he, he, felt, he felt her. He felt all those years of pain. All those years of agony, all those years of trying to find an answer, but she never could. And he felt that. Oh, Who touched me? I'm thankful we can touch Jesus, aren't you? He's not too far. He's never too gone. When all denied, Peter, after he touched me, when all denied, Peter and they that were with, with him said, Master. The multitude throng thee and press thee and say, it's not who touched me. Are you kidding me, Jesus? There's people all around you. And you ask a question like that. And Jesus said, this wasn't just any touch. <laughs> this was a touch that needed me. You need Jesus. He knows when you touched him. He knows when you need him. 
And he's ready to help him. Verse 46, and Jesus said, somebody has touched me, for I perceived that virtue has gone out of me. The power of Jesus just went into this woman, and she was healed. How many of you this evening are saved, child children of God, and you, you had Jesus, the virtue of Jesus, coming into your life? Amen. Amen. Ain't it wonderful? Amen. 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 I was saved at the age of 10. The fall of Tennessee. My cousin Danny, we went to, went to his church. He took a Bible and showed me, led me to the Lord. I battled with my salvation. I doubted. And it was right here, Camp Victory. I was right over there. And there was an invitation was given. And Brother Larry Hall, it's not here tonight. But I raised my hand. I was, I was nervous. I raised my hand to let it know. So Larry Hall found me. He took me right outside, took me right outside, right there. And he was sure to me my salvation. Whatever you're battling, whatever you're struggling, why don't you just touch the Lord? That's good. Why don't you let Him know what you need Him? Yeah, we spend all of our effort on physicians. We spend all of our effort trying to find something else. Why don't we just touch the Lord? <coughs> Taste and see that the Lord is good. Verse number 47, And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before Him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. Wow, imagine that 12 years. Immediately. Given immediately. He works me. Verse 48. He said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. I haven't even got to my outline yet, I probably. What I want to reach on tonight is faith or fear. So we have Jairus. There's still Jairus. And you've forgotten about him. This whole time, this woman has grabbed the attention of Jesus. And Jairus is left like, what about me? I can imagine. I mean, this is, this is really important. My daughter's dying. I need you, Jesus. Please, come to my house. He needed the Lord. And he, there was this moment of healing by this woman. 49, while he yet spake, while he was talking to the woman, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. Pop quiz. Do you think Jesus knew this would happen? Do you think Jesus knew this would happen? Do you think anything in life surprises Jesus? Whatever you do, do you think it surprises Jesus? I'm thankful tonight that our God doesn't take surprises and get afraid. I'm thankful tonight that we serve an almighty Savior who takes surprises and he's going to use them for our good and his glory. And then it says this. I can just see Jairus right now. But verse 50. But when Jesus heard it. You know, I remember Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God. The same God who said that heard, heard someone say this about him. And he's probably, you don't know me very well, do you? Do you think it matters to the Lord if she's dead or if she's alive? It didn't rock him at all. There is nothing in life that will ever rock Jesus. Nothing you can ever do. Oh, wow. It's like, oh, my. They got me there. It's not what happened here at all. Come, I can just see Jesus peacefully, calmly, taking it in as he heard. He answered him saying, fear not. Believe only, and she shall be made whole. Amen. The wisdom of Jesus Christ. He said, fear not. Believe. That's all we need to do. Don't worry, but believe in God. And she shall be made whole. Jesus kept his word. Will you obey? 
Look at Acts 14, 17. You're about to turn there. Just to support this. Acts 14, 7 says, 14, 17, sorry. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. He's a God of good things. He's a God of glorious things. And it says, I'm thankful. I'm so thankful tonight. that when my faith isn't where it should be, Jesus is. No matter how bad I fall or fail, or when I doubt, Jesus is not at all right. And let's just say Jesus could have left. He could have walked away. I'm thankful that Jesus doesn't give up on us either. He acted on his word. We may not admit faith is crazy, but I wonder, are we living a life of faith? It says in verse 51, When he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all are wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not. She is not dead, but sleepeth. Now, what did we just say earlier? That she is dead. But Jesus is saying, She's just sleeping. And they laughed at it. They ridiculed Jesus. They said, Oh, Jesus, you're crazy. They said, we, we just did the talk again. She's dead. What are you going to do? How can you do anything about this? And I want you to notice something very important this evening. He put them all out. Your lack of faith, your lack of trust in God, God cannot use that. Because they laughed and ridiculed, they missed the mighty work of God. He had to put them out. Because they ridiculed him. They made fun of him. They said, no way, Jesus. And he had to put them away. I wonder how many times God has put us out when we have missed his mighty hand. How many times in our life we've said, God, I don't think so. And we've missed God. We've missed the work of God. Simply because we doubted him. We think, no, God, there's no way. And I want to end with this. And he put them all out, and he took them by the hand, and called, saying, May arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them they should tell no man what was done. Jesus did exactly what he said he would do. Exactly what he said he would do. He went to Calvary just like he said he would do. He lives again just like he said he would. We can always take Jesus at his word. No matter what the condition, no matter what the situation, we can take Jesus at his word. Amen. Are you far from God tonight? How far have you ran from God? God desires to bring you back when you live a life of faith. Just do this. Fear not and believe. God will give you the strength for it. That's all I have. Amen. Amen. Amen.